you know, we talked a lot about uh, different aviatics features. We talked about MCNA. We talked about uh, cloud networking. We looked into GCP, Azure, AWS, and uh, aviatics features like FireNet and um, S3 bucket or uh, transit routing, right? So now it's time to kind of club all these things together and uh, look at it from a customer perspective. So the study that I have here is uh, from a real customer. Um, I'm not going to share the name because it's not a public reference, but um, uh, yeah, so this is what we have. So what I have done, I have um, some information which is not obviously obvious due to the uh, nature of the business they're in, but it's a large retail customer cases study that we have. And there are certain business objectives that they um, were trying to meet. And obviously that's the reason they came to us. And uh, when you look at the requirement, I would say about 80 to 90% of enterprise customers coming to us are coming up with pretty much same type of requirement. So the study that I'm going to present should be applicable to the majority of the folks uh, on the call call today, okay? So, so this corporation called Globex is a fictitious name, obviously. Uh, they have different types of workload. So they have a uh, workload in test, dev, and prod. And uh, today they are in Azure, 100% in Azure. And what they told us when we started uh, working with them that uh, this is our primary cloud and we're gonna stay in Azure. So, okay, so they have this workload and the requirement is that these uh, workloads should be segmented because you know these are tests, tests and prod. Now they have another uh, environment, um, a VNet basically, where they're hosting their shared services, like their automation tools, their management tools and some logging services. So they have this requirement that these guys should be able to talk to at least the shared services we need, okay? They have a few on-prem data center and um, they are going to purchase, or they have actually purchased uh, Express Route, but the problem is that the 10 gig circuit they have purchased, it's not encrypted. So they are actually looking for some solution that can give them the line rate encrypted circuit basically, right? So that's the requirement. There are some users uh, who are actually logging into these uh, these workloads for uh, for the development purposes or for testing purposes. So they want to have this architecture which allows them to actually connect using the profiles. And this is what Brian was also mentioning before, right? So the user VPN actually ties in here. So we'll see that how it looks like in the architecture diagram. Deep packet inspection or next generation firewalling is an important use case for them because the production workload they have, it is, it is running some PCI workload in there. And due to the compliance and audit reasons, they are forced to inspect all the traffic that is going into this prod VNet and coming out of this prod VNet. Okay. All right, so let's design it. And then during the design process, you will notice that they started with Azure, but uh, when we started building it, there was one team that said, you know what, we have some special application that is running in Azure, but oh, sorry, AWS, but they told us after when we, st uh, when we build everything, then that requirement came in, but I'm gonna show you like, this is what happens when you have, you know, scope creeps. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So uh, what we have done for them, we have deployed our Aviatrix controller from the um, Azure Marketplace. And um, with that, uh, they have uh, defined some prod VNet, dev and test VNets, and a shared services VNet. So this is what they have. So um, it's a kind of a brownfield um, situation that we had. So with the help of our transit solution, what we have proposed them that this is, this is where you should start because this is what we dictate to our customer that when you are going to take on the cloud journey, you have to follow a reference design, right? MCNA. And then the starting point for MCNA is the core. This is cloud core, the transit. So that's what we did. This transit VNet is what we configured or deployed and through our controller or through Terraform, Terraform is obviously possible. Uh, we deploy the transit gateways. These are AVTX transit gateway, right? So two. And then in 
every spoke or every spoke vnet we have deployed our transit gateways right and you will notice that we are showing only one line here going between the transit and the spoke but actually they are running active mesh so they are all active active gateways running crisscross connection between them and uh, let's talk about the requirement for the uh, for the connectivity to their on-prem data center so they have already purchased the express route and uh, that's what they have and what we have provided them is a solution called hpe high performance encryption or uh, sometimes we call it insane mode as well where now they can deploy a hardware appliance aviatrix hardware appliance in the on-prem data center and can achieve the line rate throughput on this link this azure express route link that they have right and uh, that's how we are actually meeting their requirement so okay so that's good what about the user vpn if you recall that was another requirement they have to allow their remote users which uh, could be sitting on a, uh, you know could be a windows or uh, could be a mac doesn't really matter uh, to connect to their respective vnet or their respective workload right so this is where the aviatrix user vpn solution comes into picture now there are two options to connect these resources into vnet so option number one is to directly land them in the transit so deploy a transit uh, or oh, sorry a user vpn gateway here and land them here but that's not the right architecture because remember this these guys are falling into cloud access category so our recommendation is to deploy a user vpn vnet and then land them here and this is this will be acting like a spoke so once they're here they can actually connect to transit and then from transit they can go to their respective vnet based on the the profile right and they can also integrate it with the the idp providers like octa or duo so that's why or that's how they can actually achieve higher security levels so that is good all good uh, what about the deep packet inspection because remember uh, the requirement was to make sure that prod vnet that is hosting the pci data or pci virtual machines should be in compliance so in order to support that use case we have deployed these palo alto vm series firewall inside the transit vnet right so with that and then with the utilization of our security domain and connection policy model what they can do they can specify this vnet as the uh, critical workload vnet and then all the traffic will be inspected using the the policies they will create through the controller okay and then this is something they didn't tell us but um, it came up later that uh, these these firewalls they should allow the egress in uh, towards internet as well so it's uh, very simple very easy there is a check button in the controller you just enable egress security and then you can enable the internet access through those firewalls as well so you can see all the traffic within the cloud and if it is a traffic coming in from the on prem uh, it's all inspected by this these firewalls right and uh, this is obviously azure but uh, this is something that they told us after we have deployed everything that um, sorry we forgot to tell you we have this special need if there is an application sitting in aws so how do we connect so the answer is very simple because you adopted this mcna architecture you have this transit so it's it's just a matter of connecting another transit or deploying a transit vpc in aws and connecting these together and then we will take care of all the route propagation network correctness and making sure that uh, you have access to to aws uh, in a in a manner that is required by your enterprise okay so as you can see the, all the interaction is done by the controller it's uh, programming the routes it's creating the, the security policies it's um, making sure our intent is actually uh, applied properly and uh, this can be done using the api or the terraform uh, majority of the customers at least i talk to in the enterprise space they all are using terraform so that's how they are actually managing the interaction but not only that they need extreme visibility so what they can do they can extend this platform and use 
Copilot, which is part of the platform, to allow these gateways to send the traffic towards this Copilot, uh, basically the NetFlow data that we correlate on our side. And we call it Flow IQ because it's not just NetFlow, it's just the addition of NetFlow plus other uh, services we tap into and give you this visibility. So that's how we solve all these problems and solving a lot of customers like this.